Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be explaining what exercises should you choose for your pushing movements. When I was starting out, I didn't know what exercises to choose from. And for a lot of beginners out there, it can be quite confusing exercises to choose from. So specifically for this video, I'll be giving free exercises you should incorporate into your pushing routine. Pushing movements are movements that engage the chest, the triceps, and the front delt of your shoulders. A pushing movement is typically one where you push resistance away from your body. And pushing movements are extremely functional in everyday movements and activities. So it's important to build good pushing strength, no matter if you want to be a power lifter, calisthenics athlete, or for say, you're just, you just want to live a healthy life. Pushing strength is a necessity. To not overcomplicate things, I'll be giving free movements and free exercises that you can incorporate into your pushing routines that can be easily progressively overloaded, are simple to do, and overall are great movements that are the best for overall pushing strength, growth, and muscle hypertrophy. So the first exercise that I'm going to be speaking about is the push-up. The push-up is a great beginner, intermediate, and even for advanced lifters out there, the push-up can still be challenging. The pros of the push-up is that it can be done literally anywhere. It's a simple movement that you can't really mess up and you can start anywhere. There's tons of variations to choose from. You could do archer push-ups, one arm push-ups, knee push-ups, diamond push-ups. There are so many variations. Push-ups are just overall a great movement to choose from. So in order to do an actual proper push-up, here are the proper steps. Number one, go down on all fours and protract your scapula. This means pushing your arms forwards without moving your body at all. Secondly, what I want you to do is make sure your hands are aligned at your shoulder, beside your shoulders. They should not be by your head or too low unless you're doing pseudo planche push-ups. And now with all these procedures done correctly, go down slowly while retracting your scapula, which means bringing your shoulder blades together, pinching them together as you are squeezing something behind the middle of your back. And make sure that chest touches the floor. 90 degrees is acceptable, but you really want to emphasize the full range of motion. After your chest has touched the ground, explode on the way up. And once you're up again, with straight arms with full range of motion, protract your scapula again. This is the proper push-up. If this is too hard for you, you can always go on your knees. The further away your knees are from your body, the harder the movement will get. If you bring your knees even closer together, movement gets pretty easy. If knee push-ups are too challenging for you, do them against the wall or do them on an elevated surface. Overall, push-ups are amazing and there's tons of variations to choose from. The only problem with push-ups is that you can't easily progressively overload with the movement. Sure, you can add more reps, but if you want to add more weight and target the push-up in a hypertrophy or even strength building levels, you're going to have to add extra resistance, which can be actually quite difficult with the push-up specifically. Stacking weight on top of your back with a push-up is quite hard because it can slide off. However, the next movements do not have this issue. And the next movement we're going to talk about is a vertical pushing movement. And the best movement for this is the military or overhead press. The military or standing overhead press is a great movement in order to target the front delts specifically in this movement. The pros are you can easily progressively overload. You can just add more weight on each side of the bar and you can start out anywhere. You can use an extremely lightweight if you are a beginner and use an extremely heavy weight if you are an advanced lifter. The only problem is that it actually requires equipment, a barbell and even a squat rack if you actually need it. Which is why the standing handstand push-up is the best alternative for a calisthenics version. If the handstand push-up is too difficult, you can always use pike push-ups. And again, these calisthenics versions have the same benefits as their weight free weight counterparts, except you can do them anywhere and with your own body weight. Now onto the procedures and how to do it. Firstly, you want to use a proper weight that you can handle and one that is challenging. After that, pick up the weight from the squat rack with both arms at a 45 degree angle. Your arms shouldn't be too wide or too close together. 
your elbow should form a 45 degree angle from your body not a 90 degree angle because this position will actually leave you open to a lot of injuries including shoulder dislocation then afterwards step away from the squat rack and push the bar vertically up above your head with your arms straight and locked out at the end and afterwards bring the weight down at least below your chin or to your chest if possible and lift all the way up again do it repeatedly until you finish your sets or you just can't do any more. And that's the standing overhead press. Extremely easy to progressively overload, a great exercise, and it's very simple to do. The only downside is that it requires equipment, which is why the handstand push-up is the best alternative. However, it requires much more skill because you also have to learn how to balance a handstand. Either way, each exercise basically does the exact same thing as the other counterpart, and you choose which exercise you have access to and which one reflects your goals. Now the third exercise, I'm going to be talking about the bench press. The bench press is by far one of the most famous exercises in all of fitness. And there's a big reason for this. The bench press is an extremely effective exercise at targeting your mid chest, your triceps, and your shoulders. It can be easily progressively overloaded. It's a simple movement to do. And overall, it's a pretty fun movement and a lot of people enjoy doing it generally. The only disadvantages are that it requires equipment, you need a spotter, and also it's quite easy to eagle lift on this lift. A lot of people do not use exercise. The body weight counterpart to this exercise is the dip. Dips are great in building all the same muscle groups as the bench press, except this time you're using your own body weight. And an extra benefit of doing a dip are you don't need a spotter, you don't need as much external equipment as the bench press, and it allows you to get used to lifting your own body weight. And unlike the push up, you can add use a dip belt. But overall, both exercises basically do the exact same thing, and either exercise should be choose depending on your goals and personally, depending on what you prefer and your accessibility. Now, the ways to do a bench press is pretty simple. Firstly, lie down on the bar, lie down on the bench and make sure your eyes align perfectly with the bar. Your view should be the bar exactly. Your grip shouldn't be too wide or too narrow. It should be a 45 degree angle made by your elbows, same as the overhead press. Afterwards, lift the bar up to your chest level and slowly bring it down to your mid chest in a crescent moon pattern. And afterwards, lift it up with full range of motion. Make sure that bar touches your chest and make sure your arms are straight at the top. Do not eagle lift with this movement and make sure you choose a weight that is challenging but isn't too heavy nor too light. And you've got yourself the bench press. So honestly, in conclusion, these freak exercises and their alternative movements are obviously great movements to build overall pushing strength. Of course, once again, these free movements shouldn't be the only movements in your chest workout. From the main exercise to the alternatives, you should choose which exercise you prefer more. For example, I personally prefer weighted dips over bench press. It depends on person to person. Train with intensity and volume and overall progressively overload on these movements and you'll see progress in no matter what your goals are. I hope you found this video helpful and if you really did enjoy, I highly recommend that you subscribe because I'm trying to hit 1,000 subscribers as soon as possible and I'd really appreciate it if every single one of you right now would subscribe because I know a lot of you aren't really subscribed right now. Anyways, I'll see you guys later.